Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with a Friday Reads video. Happy Friday everybody! Today is July the 23rd, <laughs> 2021 and it is about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's already been a really busy morning for me. Uh, so I'm a bit later sitting down to film this but I am not worried about that at all because I'm on vacation today from work, which is kind of nice. I have a vacation day today. I had one yesterday as well, so I have a lovely four-day long weekend. The biggest reason I did it is because, like, my, well, my wedding anniversary is tomorrow. It's our 11 year, but that's not a factor. Like, we're not going anywhere doing anything, mainly because stuff is still really iffy up here, and, you know, you just really don't have the freedom to do a lot of things like that you kind of want to do. We don't know, like, they're just starting to open back up attractions and stuff like that. So, you know, there is that. So I think we're probably just going to hold off and do something next year. And that's fine. I mean, our 10-year anniversary last year, all we did got to do was really go out for dinner because it was right in the middle of COVID. So, you know, it's a thing. But had breakfast this morning and we went over to Walmart to go pick up a few things. Stopped at Country Style, got my hot chocolate. Um, and yeah, I just thought I would sit down and do a normal Friday Reads for you guys. So you might have seen in the title of this video that I do have a new e-reader. So I thought I would share that with you guys. I am the queen, the queen of e-readers. So um, this is what happened. So back in December, I bought the Kobo Libra, which I did a whole video on Kindle versus Cobra. Cobra. <laughs> Kindle versus Kobo. <laughs> Good lord. And um, that video has been my highest watched video. Like it was a like, I don't want to call it a throwaway video because it was one that I needed. I wanted to fit a video like I wanted to put up a video at that time. And I wasn't sure what else to do. And I'm like, Oh, I just got this new e reader. Maybe I'll talk about the two of them. And it's been like my most watched video, like uh, people from all over YouTube are like finding that video and watching it. So thank you. <laughs> However, what I had actually wanted to buy was the Forma, which is the one that's like a step up from the Libra. Um, it's more in tune with the Kindle, um, excuse me, the Kindle, let me reach for it, my Kindle Oasis, okay? So what happened was I've been looking at it more and more, and I actually, we did get a little bit of extra money over the last week or so, which has been a bit of a bonus. You know, we got to, you know, treat ourselves a little bit, kind of maybe an early anniversary gift, if you will. And I mentioned to my husband that I wanted this and he's like, well, it's this much money. And I said, yeah, I know we really don't have that much. So, you know, I don't necessarily want to go out and spend it. And then he made a comment. He's like, well, what if you sold the one that you have, use that money plus some of our extra money and get the new one? And I'm like, brilliant, because if I'm upgrading from the Libra to the Forma, why keep the Libra? right? It, it doesn't make any sense. I'd rather give it to or sell it to somebody that is going to use it instead of it collecting dust on a shelf in here. So I made the decision on Monday. I put it because we had this discussion last weekend. On Monday, I put it up on the Facebook marketplace. And within three minutes, I had someone contact me and the guy was super nice. So we talked about the price. He was cool with it. I sent it with the case because I had a case that looked just like this. And uh, he said to me, he's like, I already have one. He said, but he's buying this one for his girlfriend. And I'm like, oh, that just makes me happy. So on Tuesday, he showed up here. He picked it up, which was awesome. And we did the money transfer and Bob's your uncle. And I went right over to the Chapters Indigo store because they had these in stock. And I got myself the Forma. <laughs> The Kobo Forma. So essentially my only complaint with this, and I only have one complaint with this, is that the on button sticks ever so slightly. So I don't know whether it's my device. Like it's not, okay. So for example, with my, um, with my, uh, um, with my Oasis, like I just touch that top button right there and the device comes off and on, right? Whereas this one, I've got to kind of push it a little bit, but I've noticed that since I bought it, it's getting easier. So I don't know whether or not I have to work in the on button. I don't know. But there it is. It looks very, very similar to the Forma um, with this side piece right here. I did buy a case for it. I got it in blue this time. I usually gravitate towards the pink, but I quite like the blue. This is not the official case for it. So it looks identical. Like really, everything is pretty much exactly the same as the one that I had. I have to admit though, it feels not as cheap. I hate to say that, but I felt that the Libra, that was one of my complaints is that it felt like a cheap piece of plastic. Um, 
that it was going to break really easily. This one has a bit more, not weight to it because it's still light, but it just feels like it's not going to fall apart for lack of a better term or lack of a better wording. The other thing is, is that this is not inset. So the, the forma or the, the Libra, the screen itself is inset. So you've got that gap between, do you, you guys know what I'm saying, right? There's that gap and that always bothered me. Again, it made it feel cheaper. Whereas this is flush. This is completely flush to, you know, the screen is flush. So um, just to show you guys the difference, this was the big thing for me was size. And this is bigger. So this was exactly the same size as the Libra. Okay. This one, here's the new one. Do you see the size screen difference, you guys? Like this is a true eight inch screen. So I'm telling you, reading on this thing has just been an absolute delight. So I am very, very happy with this device. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, it was well worth the money, in my opinion. Um, and I'm going to use it for about a month. And I figure maybe at the end of August and early September, I'll do a full on comparison to the Oasis because they are what would be considered comparable to each other, um, to my understanding. So yeah, I will, I will do that for you guys. Cause I know that, um, you guys would like to see that. I think, let me know. Is that something you'd like to see? Okay. I just took the brightness off. I don't know why the brightness was on. I typically don't like having it on, but yeah. Absolutely. I love it. I love the size of the screen and it's still a good weight and, and everything. So very, very happy with it. So that was my really big purchase this week. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I am the queen of e-readers and I fully, uh, you know, accept that. So let's get into Friday reads. What am I reading this weekend? Today and over the weekend. So we'll start off with the audiobook. I haven't started it yet. I'm going to be starting it, um, in a little bit. Um, and that is, it's for the Book Sisters Book Club. I will be starting, um, hold on, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Um, I have not read Beach Read, which was her first book. And it's funny because we were just at the Walmart and I saw it there in paperback. And I thought about it and I'm like, no, wait, you own it on audio. Why, why are you going to buy the paperback version of it? So I'm not buying books and I still have to tell myself you're not buying books. I will admit I grabbed a couple of books this week that were on sale on Kindle for like $1.99. And I mean, like that is, it's, it is what it is. I can't completely cut myself off, but I'm not paying like exorbitant amounts for books. Let's put it that way. So I will be starting this today. Again, it's for the Book Sisters Book Club. The live show is going to be on the 31st. Originally, we were going to do it tomorrow, but then I like mentioned, you know, it's my wedding anniversary and I didn't know if we were actually going to be doing anything. We decided not to, but I still haven't read this yet. <laughs> so the live show goes next Saturday on the 31st, the last day of the month. So I have no idea what this is about. I'll be completely honest. I've been kind of keeping my head in the sand a little bit when people talk about it. Um, but I've heard mixed reviews on it. So I'm interested, you know, I'm listening to it on audio. So of course I will let you guys know once I get it done. And then, um, I did, I am picking up an, an arc because Brie and I are actually talking to the author on Monday. We will have the interview on our podcast prior to the release date of this book. This book has an October release date. So I'm reading this well in advance. And that is The Lights on Knoxbridge Lane by Rowan Parrish. This is a Harlequin special edition novel. Sorry for the black and white cover, but this is the very first male male romance put out by the Harlequin category lines. I know that they have put out LGBTQ plus books before under their Karina Press imprint, but this is the first under the regular line. So I am very, very excited about it. Um, Brie finished it already. She loved it. So I am starting it today and I'm very, very excited. Now it's, it's very Christmassy. You can, again, you can't see it cause it's in black and white, but like it's very Christmassy, Christmas lights and the tree and the snow and the whole nine yards. But like she said, it's just the right amount of Christmas, which is great. So I'm very, very excited and I'm actually hoping to get this done by Saturday. So you should have my full review for it on Sunday, which will be great. So yeah. So I do have two other books that I want to start because you guys know me. I like having lots of stuff on the go, lots of books to read. So I also uh, want to start today uh, a book. I like, it's funny. It's like, I like having books on different, like <laughs> different formats. Like I have an audiobook. I'm going to have this on my Kobo. 
you know, this book I'm going to show you is actually on the Glow app uh, through Harlequin. So it's a Harlequin book. Um, and that is Texas Takedown by Heather Woodhaven. This is a love inspired suspense novel. And I am reading this for a challenge um, uh, for the Triple RC challenge, which is um, the prompt is to read uh, the character names. And I think the main character in this story is Isabel. And that's the character name that I need to read a book. Something I don't know. I'm not I'm not 100%. It's baby name, something like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm rambling. I haven't started this yet. No idea what it's about. I'm looking forward to it. The one thing I do like about the Glow app is that you can do text to speech with it. Now, you can't speed it up like you can on a Kindle Fire, but you can still do text to speech. And it's kind of nice if you're doing other things um, to be able to listen to the story. I mean, it's very much that Siri type voice, but it's still kind of nice, especially I think for people who have maybe disabilities that don't allow them to physically read a book or digitally read a book. Um, you know, audiobooks are fantastic for those with learning disabilities or like someone like my mom, like I've talked about before, who had a stroke years ago and just can't read a book because everything jumps around for her. It's very hard for her to pay attention. Whereas audiobooks have been her saving grace. And it kind of makes me upset that audiobooks are so expensive. And the other thing is too, like these devices that you'll drop two or three hundred dollars on either the Oasis or the Forma or, you know, whatever, don't give you the ability to do text to speech. Like, you know, how, would it really be that much of a bigger deal to, to give the audio availability on these? You can do it on the Kindle Fire. And I, I fully appreciate that. But not the thing is with the Kindle Fire, it's a heavy device and it's more like a tablet, you know. But I guess the way they're looking at it, if you're not physically reading, why would you need it? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'd ask Jeff Bezos, but he's in space right now. So. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's just kind of my little side note on it that I think that stuff needs to be more give give people the with certain disabilities or abilities or what have you to be able to read all of the books because again not everything is also available on audio right and that's the other thing and like there's another book that I'm reading that I'm going to show you in a second that I picked up at the library I'll get into that in a second and I noticed it's not available on ebook so again here's a book I'm going to hold up and maybe you guys are not going to be able to find it you know like books should be more accessible. Like I, I feel for all people, you know, maybe if you have a learning disability or you're sight impaired or what have you, you should still be able to read everything that everybody else can read. And that's just my side note. Sorry, I didn't mean to get into that. But um, we were talking to an author last night. We did an interview with uh, an author last night. She talks about it in the interview, so I'm not going to get too much into it, but she had a car accident. And, you know, now she she sometimes finds like finds writing is actually difficult so she does dictation to write her books which is very interesting and Maisie Yates does that as well not for that reason just because Maisie Yates finds it a lot easier for her to write a book that way but again more accessibility I think and that's just my two cents on that one because I've always like you know I don't know if you guys did this when you were younger or whatever you'd be sitting around and be like hey you know, like the, one of those questions that you see on stuff, like if you went, you know, were stuck on a desert island, what's the one book that you would bring with you? Those kind of questions, right? Where it was like, if you lost one of your senses, which one would you prefer to lose? I think the question, I remember our friend, my friends on top, and the biggest fear that I've ever had is losing my eyesight. It terrifies me because I wouldn't be able to read. And I know like, I want to see my family. I want to see my niece and nephew. If I can't read a book, <laughs> I would just be so upset. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to go off on that whole like little side tangent. Um, so like I said, I went to the library yesterday. Now you guys are actually going to see a whole vlog of it on Monday. So I did vlog it and I did a book haul um, from the library and I went over to my new local library and I got a library card and I'm so excited. But I was perusing through the books and I saw this one and I started laughing when I saw the title. Not a book I'm familiar with. I've never even heard of this author. Again, I looked on Amazon. This is not available as an ebook, but it's a mass market paperback, which I like reading. They're, they're much easier to read than that big heavy. Right up there is that Naughty Brits that I tried reading earlier this month and I just couldn't. It was just too much to handle. So 
I'm sorry, I just love the title on this one, you guys. Must Love Wieners. <laughs> By Casey Griffin. <laughs> it's about wiener dogs, guys. Get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> Mine went the very same place. I'm like, I need to know what this book is about. Um, this is a romance, uh, a rescue dog romance. It's the first in a series. I don't know if there's any others, but it says first in a wickedly funny new series brimming with mystery and romance. So I've just started it. I am two or three chapters, about 25 pages in. The chapters are relatively short and um, I'm enjoying it so far. So I do have goals set, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that. I've got tabs on how far I'd like to get every day. I'd like to get this done by the end of the month. That is my goal, so we shall see. But um, yeah, I am really enjoying this so far. So far, it's really quirky. Let's put it that way, it's quirky. But I will talk more about this probably at the end of the month when I get it finished. But for right now, I'm quite enjoying it and I'm super, super happy I picked this one up. So yeah, and like I said, stay tuned. So on Sunday, of course, will be my weekly wrap up. And then on Monday, I've got that vlog haul from the library going up and then on Wednesday I have my TBR for August going up and guys the Monday and Wednesday videos have already been filmed all I have to do is edit them <laughs> having these extra couple days off work really gave me the motivation to get stuff done <laughs> so I'm really really happy with that but yeah so anyway that's all I have for today's video today. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know what are your plans for the weekend? What are you guys reading? Have you read any of these books? Like, have you read um, The People We Meet on Vacation? You know, I'll, I'll decide. Like, as I'm reading through it, I'll see whether or not I like it or not. But, you know, let me know. Were you a yay or a nay on it? So, you know, I've heard both sides. I'm just not reading a lot of the reviews. I want to stay away from that part of it. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it. I'll talk to you in my next video. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.